or you have seen someone who was doing a new kind of example on waste control, for me to come to Nairobi and I would have done that for my life. Hello, uh, good afternoon to you all. I do have a request. In case you're not speaking, please, can you get to mute yourself in case you're not speaking? Uh, please get to mute yourself. Uh, thank you for... Uh, thank you all for joining in. Uh, my name is Arafat Mu uh, from Swahili Port, uh, Hub Foundation and also uh, from the Global Opportunity Network in Mombasa. Uh, thanks for joining in, uh, in spite of uh, the slight hitches. Uh, to be able to kick off with our program this afternoon, I'm going to get to pull up an agenda. All right, sure. So this is uh, the agenda. Uh, we are slightly behind schedule, but we shall try our level best to be able to walk through this as fast as possible. Yeah, so um, the goal, uh, going into the uh, first agenda for this uh, convening, why we are here, uh, the assumption is that majority of us who are here are either aspiring entrepreneurs are, or we are already executing uh, on our plans for our business ventures. 
or we are stakeholders uh, from the entrepreneurship ecosystem, either from Mombasa Coast region or Kenya at large. So uh, the goal and objective of this info session um, is that it actually starts from the need. Uh, turns out that a majority of uh, entrepreneurs who are running businesses or we want to get into entrepreneurship, one of the needs uh, that they get to list the most is access to a business financing capital. Uh, that is one of the uh, needs that entrepreneurs always get to put forth. So um, what we learned was that, for example, Swahili Port Hub Foundation, we don't have a fund where we give, where we get to invest in uh, businesses run by entrepreneurs. However, what exists is being able to bring together uh, different ecosystem players, uh, different uh, players of the entrepreneurship ecosystem and be able to present uh, these opportunities to you. So um, the purpose of this info session is to be able to take you through how you can successfully raise uh, funding from the Tony Elumelu Foundation Entrepreneurs, uh, Entrepreneurship Program, uh, where they get to provide our uh, 5,000 uh, US dollars, which is around half a million Kenyan shillings uh, to all entrepreneurs that make it through up to the end of the program. So yeah, the purpose of this uh, program is to take you through how you can successfully apply and raise your chances of uh, raising that 5,000 US dollars. Um, it's non rocket uh, it's non rocket science as we shall get into those details. So if you are a business, if you are an entrepreneur, whether practicing or aspiring, and you want to be able to raise funding for your business venture, then sure, uh, welcome to this. Uh, so before we go further into uh, the other details of this program, um, I would like to stop here, pause, and give an opportunity uh, to the stakeholders that we are working with on this particular program uh, to introduce themselves and also what uh, their respective organization does. So yeah, I if you are on this uh, if you are on this call, uh, please are uh, yeah you can get to uh, you can get to um you can introduce yourself and what your respective organization does. I can see there are quite a number uh, on this call. So yeah, please uh, feel free to unmute yourself and get to uh, introduce yourself personally and what your respective organization does. Uh, looks like uh, looks like individuals won't be introducing themselves or in case you're speaking are uh, you most likely on mute please unmute yourself uh, please uh, feel free I uh, wouldn't really wish to uh, call out names uh, please feel free to introduce yourself thank you Okay, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dr. Matthew Kessa from the Technical University of Mombasa. We run uh, a hub called the Blue Economy Innovation Hub, and it uh, basically does uh, research on uh, social innovations within the blue economy space and supporting entrepreneurs and uh, participants within the blue economy space thanks and i'm glad to be here
good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gailin Bichanga. I work with the Booster Business Mombasa that is situated at Close the Gap Hub, Pratna Square. So we are an incubator. We incubate startups in Mombasa for 12 to 14 weeks and we train them on matters entrepreneurship and uh, also support them in uh, growing their skills to be scalable uh, in the ecosystem here in Mombasa. So I'm so happy to be here and just to get to hear more about Tony Elumelu Foundation and how our entrepreneurs can be part and parcel of the funding or applications of uh, the Tony Elumelu Foundation and how they can also grow in their businesses. Thank you so much. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Matthew. Thank you very much. Uh, Dailin, uh, anyone else? You can see there's uh, Masi from YGAP and a number of others. Uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and introduce yourself and also what your organization does. Hello, good afternoon. Everyone, my name is Doris. I'm from Mombasa. And I'm happy to be to be in this Swahili Swahili Port Hub so that to get more skills about, about the inter entrepreneurship. I have been doing baking and pastry, but for now I don't have a a place. But I, I, I would like to, to get more skill on how to start or how to run a business. All right, uh, sounds great. Are uh, anyone else? I think. Okay, cool. All right. So now, um, the next item on our the next item on our agenda. Uh, since we're done with the introductions, thanks a lot, uh, each one of you for joining. Is now uh, to get into uh, what is this our uh, program, the Tony Ilumelu Foundation, entrepreneurship uh, entrepreneurship program. So I'm gonna get to take you through. And I will literally go straight to their. I will literally go straight to their website are where there's most of the information actually gets to lie. All right, so cool. Uh, please confirm that you can see my screen. So at the moment, I'm on the website of uh, the Tony Elumelu Foundation. And so they do run this program known as uh, the Tony Ilumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program. It's uh, the biggest of its kind on the African continent. And uh, it's been running since 2015. And every year they fund more than a thousand entrepreneurs from all the 54 countries of Africa including Kenya. And out of the 1,000, that's around on average, around 100 entrepreneurs from every country are usually funded uh, with uh, 5,000 uh, US dollars. That's around half a million Kenyan shillings. And this capital, it's uh, this uh, funding, it's a seed capital, uh, it's, a seed, uh, seed it's a seed fund where you are not required to return. However, 
Uh, by becoming a Tony Elumelu R entrepreneur, you are required to be able to execute uh, with the highest level of honesty the business plan that you did, uh, the business plan that you did submit. So there is a process uh, to getting the 5,000, there is a process to getting the 5,000 uh, grant. It usually starts off with training that lasts uh, two months, uh, it's online. Then after the training, you are required to submit some due diligence documents, uh, which is like your national ID of which I understand we all have. The assumption is that we are all 18 years and above. And then after that, you get to submit a business plan which is basically a document that provides a picture into what your business is, what is the problem that you're solving, what is uh, the product or service you're offering on the market, who are your target customers, uh, how much money are you going to charge for your product or service, um, how, yeah, how are you gonna get to make money, who are the team members that are executing on this business plan. So that is it. And then after submitting the business plan, finally, there is uh, the pitching phase where you are required to shoot or record a four minute video of now the core team that is uh, the partners or the founders. If you are alone, it's only uh, yourself. But if you are two people, then uh, both the business partners have to be featured in that video. So you record that video four minutes maximum and you upload it onto the platform uh, for the foundation, uh, something that will get to take you through. And then ultimately, those that score the highest get to be given the funding. So as you see, it's not just a matter of applying and then getting the funding. It actually takes a, a whole year uh, from the time you apply to the time you get this funding. So um, up to that point, uh, probably maybe before uh, we open it up to discussion, before we get into the uh, next segment of this program is the applications for this program opened on January 1st this year, and they will be ending on 31st of this year, which is a 31st of next month. So which means we have around roughly one month because today is 24th. So applications will end on 31st. But then something else that uh, you need to know is that during this program, uh, from the training to submission of the business plan to pitching, individuals get, some people are sort of like, they keep on saving from one stage to another stage. So for example, if say 500 entrepreneurs from Kenya apply successfully, the reality is not all the 500 will proceed to the business plan submission stage, reason being, some of us, and also based of what we learned from running this kind of a program last year, some of us are going to be too busy that we shall not submit those weekly assignments. That is one. Um, the other is that uh, some of us are, will attend the training, but maybe the concepts will be, the concepts, the concepts will be too complex to the extent that you will score the least, uh, you will score uh, lower marks. So, so majorly those that do not progress beyond the training phase, those are majorly the reasons. It's either you're too busy, so you fail or to submit the weekly assignments, or maybe you have ample time, but the concepts, or you never understood the materials. And as a result, you do not score highly. 
uh, because as I've said, um, even if you get to progress from one stage to another, it's very important that you score very highly. And unfortunately, the foundation does not communicate uh, your, it doesn't communicate the score. They keep that information to, uh, to us, uh, to themselves. So I'm going to stop there briefly and open it up uh, to uh, questions before we go into the next uh, phase of the agenda. All right. Uh, does any one of you on the call uh, have a question or there's something that you'd like to seek further clarification on? Uh, please unmute yourself and get to ask your question. Uh, if you have a question, please uh, go on. Uh, please, if, if uh, that overview that I have provided, if it is not clear, please ask a question. And then you'll be answered. Uh, the assumption is that we have all understood. So should we go on to the next stage? Maybe another question that I have, um, for all those on the call, is there anyone who applied last year? And uh, if you don't mind, please get to share your story. Uh, if you applied last year and you got the funding, that is awesome, congratulations. If you did apply last year and you never got the funding, uh, could you please uh, yeah, also get to tell us like at what stage did you drop off? because uh, I really understand that will be very uh, helpful to, uh, to also know. Um, if you don't mind, please uh, turn on your... Okay, looks like there's none. All right, still fine. Let me reshare my screen again. So to take you through a visual of the program last year, this is how the process worked. Uh, sorry, this presentation is for last year, uh, but turns out that uh, the foundation has made some slight changes to the program this year, uh, based off the feedback uh, that we have got from those who have already applied. So this is how, this is the process. So. From signing up onto their platform, applying, and finally getting the 5,000 or half a million uh, seed capital grant to your bank account, not your personal bank account, it is the bank account of the registered business. And we shall go into what nature of businesses because they are not funding you as an individual, they are funding the business, right? So from here to here, it takes one year. So uh, please, uh, you, should, you should know that it takes one year to move from this stage to this stage. And this is the entire process. So first you go onto their platform, create an account, sign up, register, uh, fill in your bio data. So that is your name, your age, where you're located, uh, your gender. You also get to put in details of your business, what, it is, uh, what is the name, a brief description of your business, um, whether you're making revenue or not, whether it is still an idea or it's a business that is already operating. Then after that, um, you take a psychometric test as well as a business knowledge assessment test. 
uh, this last uh, 45 minutes. Then immediately you done with this uh, stage number three, you get an immediate result through the platform. The same is also at uh, the same result you are emailed, right? So they have automated some processes, but ultimately the results that you will get, it is either you have successfully applied or you have unsuccessfully applied. And for those who have unsuccessfully applied, you will be required to wait again next year. But for those who have successfully applied, are, you are categorized based on uh, the scores that you, uh, based on the scores um, that you earned at this, uh, at uh, stage number three. So you are, now the difference of this year's program is that this year you are not told which category you are in after you have taken up the test. You are only told that, uh, thank you. You are now moving on to our, uh, the next phase of uh, the bespoke. They are referring to it as the bespoke uh, business management training that will start uh, um, from around 20th of April this year. So this year, there are no these categories. So last year, myself, I did apply last year and uh, I was put in uh, the advanced category, uh, which is also referred to as disruptor. But that doesn't mean that the business idea you have submitted is disruptive. It only means that uh, you understood uh, this kind of like, yeah, the, the, tests, the, the test that you went through, um, like you scored a certain mark, so that's why you put in that category. And individuals put in either startup, innovator, or disruptor, or if like this year, no one knows what category are an individual is placed in. This does not mean, say for example, if somebody has been put in the advanced category, you, uh, you have a higher chance of, uh, you have a higher chance of being funded. No, that is not, uh, that is not the case, right? Everybody that is put in this, uh, in either, in any of this category um, is eligible to be, is eligible to be funded. So, but since you have joined this info session and since uh, the foundation will only fund top performers, that is individuals who score the highest because they take an average of all stages and they pick out those that have uh, scored the highest. I would strongly advise, uh, this is my opinion, I would strongly advise that where possible, please try as much as possible to ensure that you perform the highest. So which means that you out of the questions being asked, at least majority of those that you answer are, uh, are correct. Then after that, uh, stage number four, you go through the business training uh, for which this year, the business training will start around 20th of April. I don't know, uh, I can't confirm that date, but from uh, those who have applied this year, uh, the foundation communicated that um, they will get back they will get in touch that is um, after the 16th of April. So we could assume that the training will start around 20th of April. Then after the training, which lasts two months, the next stage is submission of a business plan. And here, the foundation shares a template. So they share that template. You have to tailor your business plan to fit their templates, usually a maximum of five pages. I know majority of us, those who have worked with business plans, usually um, a majority of us, okay, somebody is telling me to put full screen, but it's on my laptop, it is a full screen. Uh, I don't know for other folks, uh, for those who are watching on Zoom or those who are have joined in person here at Swahili Port, uh, please confirm, I don't know which version that you are seeing, but for my case, it is, our, it is full screen. Uh, my, on my screen, I can see it's a full screen, right? So yeah, and then after submission of the business plan, 
the next phase is a, it's a pitch contest. So as I said, from if say for example, 500 entrepreneurs from Kenya apply, or let's say 100,000 entrepreneurs from Africa apply. From stage four, moving from stage four to stage five, not all the 100,000 will progress to the stage of a business plan submission. If you did not, if you did not, if you performed poorly, let me say so. If you did perform poorly at the business training stage, you will be dropped off. You won't progress to the business plan stage. And the same case applies. If your business plan is not convincing enough, you will not progress to the stage of a pitch contest submission of, the, uh, of your pitch video. And even for those who make it to stage six, if you are not articulate enough, then you will not be funded by uh, the foundation. So in visual terms, that is, the entire, uh, that is the entire process. And that is how it's going to apply this year. The only difference this year is that uh, the foundation has done away with this stage of having to categorize our successful applicants. Now, is there any question up to that point? Because now the interesting thing is to go into uh, what were the businesses that were funded last year? Um, is there any question up to, that, uh, up to that point? Please, if you are joining us in person or you're joining in virtually via Zoom, uh, you have a question, please do ask, uh, please do ask a question. Uh, feel free to, uh, feel free, it's very important that you ask, in case there is anything that is not, uh, that is not clear, please do ask a question. Okay. Hi, Arafat, how are you? Going one. Hello. Hello. Yes, please go on. Hello, yes, please go on. You can hear me, yeah? um, Robert, uh, down here. So, yeah. yeah, so quite a number of people have also come in at the report hub here. So we'll also get to collect questions and uh, in due time get to share. Uh, I have to admit uh, we are having some technicalities down here. So um, as we go by, I'm sure majority of the people here will get to share um, anything that they missed or any important questions. So I'll give out that opportunity as we go on. Sawa, sawa. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Robert, for that coordination. So since there isn't any question, now I would like to move into the next stage, uh, the next agenda uh, of this uh, info session. So the next agenda, so we've gone through uh, what this program is about. So we wanna go through the report for last year. Unfortunately, we won't go through the report of 2019 due to time constraints. So we wanna go through this report of last year are what were the businesses that were funding at what stage? An idea, does it have to be an idea? So it's just a business idea in your mind. Does it have to be an existing business in such a case that you have an already existing business, you have customers, right? Growth, what that means is that do you need to be employing so many people making millions of shillings, right? And preferably if your business makes a million shillings a month, please don't apply. This is not uh, the kind of uh, program that you should apply for. So, but one thing that I would say, if you have a business idea or you have a business and it's just yourself and maybe your other partner, that is your business partner, are you making some revenues by not a lot of money, right? then yeah, this program is for you. But one thing that I can comment on, if your business is you import and distribute, for example, you buy shoes from China and you distribute those shoes, please don't apply 
uh, there's a high possibility you will not be funded because there is no value that you are adding. Just buying um, products uh, from China, importing them and distributing them, uh, you are not adding any value. So there's a high possibility you will not be funded. If that is the kind of business that you have, uh, please uh, bear in mind because it's a uh, part of the terms and conditions of the foundation. So yeah, let's go into the report for last year. I'm gonna get to pull it up. Uh, let me get to put full screen, but it's a bit tricky. Uh, if I put full screen, not all details will be applicable. So yeah, this is uh, the report for last year. 406,000 applications were received all over Africa. Now, so last year, what happened is that they combined both applicants for 2020 and applicants for 2021. So in total, there were 406,000 of all the 50 from all the 54 countries in Africa. Why they combined is because due to COVID in 2020, the foundation couldn't go on with this program. Uh, so they opted to uh, pause a bit. They opted to like uh, not to continue on with this program in 2020. So they could deal with uh, COVID. So they opted to combine both applicants for 2020 and 2021. So out of the 406,000 that submitted their applications, 206,000 were shortlisted for training. Remember, as I told you, not everyone who applies will go on to the training phase. And the purpose of this program, assuming it is your first time or assuming that you've never got funding from this, um, from the foundation, our goal is to guide you to progress to the training phase, from the training phase to the business plan phase, from the business plan phase to the pitching phase, from the pitching phase, ultimately uh, to getting uh, that $5,000 wired to your cash. But don't look at it as just a matter of, I want the 5,000. Because if your goal is the 5,000, trust me, you will most likely lose, or you might give up along the way. So that is it. And out of this that applied, only 1% of this actually got the 5,000 US dollars, 1%. Only 1% got, uh, got the funding out of this. So you can see it is very competitive, but at the same time, uh, it is very easy to get that funding as we shall go into the details. So for those that applied, this is how it went. 74% are in urban areas, 25% uh, are rural, in rural areas. So what this means is that um, in Kenya, there are two, counties that are fully urban. That is Mombasa and uh, Nairobi. So I will only talk of uh, Mombasa uh, since uh, it's what where we are best. So um, even if somebody is from a rural area, you are eligible to apply, right? But majority were from urban. I have no idea why majority were from urban. Uh, this is for the individuals that applied the most, a majority of the individuals that applied, right? 74% from urban, majority urban. Majority that applied were male, right? Majority were male. So would really love to have more female applying. And then applications by stage of business. Please note this report is from the foundation. I'm not the author, neither are we authors of this report. It's uh, straight from the foundation. So majority were at the idea stage, which means that you do not have customers. It's still either you have a business plan. You should either have a business plan. Sorry, uh, idea stage implies that you have a business, you have an idea, it's still something in your mind not fully, uh, not fully um, kind of like, um, not fully developed yet. 
infancy, which implies that, yeah, your business is registered, you have some customers, you're making some little revenue. Uh, maybe, and I, I don't know about the specifics, what they meant by infancy, but an example would be that uh, maybe on a monthly basis, you're making around uh, 5,000 Kenyan shillings or 10,000 Kenyan shillings, right? And growth stage means that now this is, you have several employees with you, you are making around, say, are uh, how much? I really, I don't have figures, but I'm literally just are uh, estimating numbers based off my experience. Um, growth stage would mean around, you have say five or let's say more than 10 employees. Are you are expanding the business? You are getting more and more people interested in your product or service. But yeah, that, that is the state. Uh, that is uh, that, that was the split. Now, in term, in terms of uh, top ten countries by application, Nigeria seventy percent of that number that I, I showed you over there. There's four hundred thousand. Majority were from Nigeria, followed by Benin three point five, followed by Uganda three point three, followed by Cameroon, followed by Mali, followed by Kenya. Now, since we are in Kenya around 2% of those that applied last year were from Kenya. Now, something important to mention as part of this call is that uh, we would like to have more entrepreneurs, both aspiring and practicing entrepreneurs from Kenya successfully applying. So we'd love to raise this figure from 2.2% uh, to something say 10% or even it's good to say even have like 70% like the ones in uh, from Nigeria because for sure trust me like if we all if we all successfully apply if all entrepreneurs from Mombasa all entrepreneurs from coast region successfully apply that doesn't mean that if you apply your fellow entrepreneur won't be funded Actually, it turns out that the more entrepreneurs from a country, the more entrepreneurs that apply, the more entrepreneurs from that country will be funded as um, this report will demonstrate. But as you can see, Kenya, we are number one, two, three, four, five, six. Kenya, we are number six. So can we raise this figure to number two, to something like, next year it will be important to see that we are say 50% of those that applied for this program were from Kenya. Okay, let's go. So training, um, those that applied, as I showed you in those um, kind of uh, categories. So for those that were put into preparatory, they only attended the training, but they did not move on to the stage of uh, business plan submission. So assuming that we all successfully apply, ensure that your top priority is you are in a disruptor or if you can't make it to disruptor you are innovator if you can't make it here you are at the startup stage so, uh, um, so what this means is that if you put in preparatory you will only do the training you will not progress to the stage of a business plan submission but if you put in either disruptor, innovator, or innovator, you will at least be guaranteed that you'll move to the stage of business plan submission. However, something important to note is that the foundation made changes to the program this year. So if you successfully apply, you, you will not be told which category you have been placed into. That is uh, one uh, change that we have um, recognized regarding this uh, regarding this year's uh, regarding this year's uh, program. So this report continues on, but I want to take a break and open it up to questions. If you have a question, something is not clear, please ask. Thank you.
Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Ah. If
Hello, 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 hello. Um, so yeah, apologies for the uh, inconveniences. Um, apologies for the inconveniences. Um, those who are joining in via Zoom, uh, also apologies for keeping you waiting for long. Um, it's only that uh, we're trying to uh, figure out some technicalities here are uh, at the hall uh, for those who are joining in um, in person. So yeah, we have a pretty huge number of people who are joining us, uh, joining us online, as well as a good number of uh, folks joining us here in person. So, wow, for those who have joined in in person, I know there's a lot that you've missed out. But at the same time, those who are joining in virtually, like the assumption was that you are following, right? Uh, the reason why I opted to do it from up there was because when it clocked 2.30, people had already joined in via Zoom. So we prioritized those as compared to those who want to come here in person. So I'm sorry, but you guys, like you delayed getting here. So that's why we prioritize those who are joined in via Zoom. So we are going to continue on, but for those who are here in person, uh, maybe we can do some sort of like a refresher sir, to take you through where we have come from, sir, if you don't mind. So if you still don't mind, uh, let's continue on with the presentation. So uh, we were at the stage of uh, analyzing which were the businesses. So this has been the agenda, just in case you missed out. So yeah, um, so this was the agenda. Uh, we went to the specifics of what's the purpose of this information, our uh, introductions, uh, we went through what this program is about. Currently, we are going through this report. What were the businesses that were funded last year? Sawa, so happened your two course, Saizi, and that is the report that we are currently going through, Saizi. 
So for those who are online, uh, understand we had gone through this. Now, top sectors by application. Sawa. Myself, I did apply last year. I had not mentioned this since this program, as since this info session started. I did apply last year. And uh, when I was applying, luckily I got the funding. It's not really a matter of luck. Sawa, it's not a matter of luck. It's a matter of putting in the effort. So, so I did apply last year and I got the funding. But as I told you, that this, uh, the funding is not to fund my personal life. The foundation funded the business. So, so when they were wiring the cash, which was uh, late last week, it was wired to the cash at the account of the company. So, not my personal account, right? So these were the sectors and the business that I applied with, we are in the ICT sector. So some of you might say, okay, like you are funded because my business is in the ICT sector, but this is what data indicates. Last year they found, uh, they funded 5,000 entrepreneurs across Africa. We shall see how many were funded from Kenya. But out of the 5,000 that, uh, that were funded last year, Majority are in agriculture. So which means if your business is agriculture related, uh, you have a higher chance of being funded. Food and beverage, sorry, fashion number two. Are, are there creatives over here, folks in, create, in the fashion industry, right? And how over there? So if your business is around fashion, uh, then there was a food and beverage. So you, uh, I don't know, like this could be, I know one gentleman who applied last year, uh, their business in food and beverage was selling juices. Eh? Unfortunately, they never got the funding. Uh, they dropped off at, at the business training phase. So but if your business is in food and beverage, yeah. ICT, so if you're building web apps, mobile apps, uh, commercial slash retail, Education and training, manufacturing, you make soap, you make shoes, you make clothes, right? Uh, I know he does, he's in fashion, but they also do manufacturing. So, uh, beauty and wellness, okay, I don't know, okay, like, Personally, I haven't really done research on what it implies for a business to be under beauty and wellness. But I know if you're running any of, if you're running a business that falls under any of these categories, I believe you can easily uh, relate, right? And then the other is healthcare, media and uh, entertainment, and finally waste management. So, so those were the categories of businesses that are, were mostly funded. And it's that because you realize that are probably more entrepreneurs from agriculture were funded for Sababu, majority of those that applied are in agriculture. So, but regardless of any kind of business you're running, I told you most likely the business in Yawata fund, if your job is to import things from China and distribute them locally, like there's a high possibility you want to be funded. You need to add some value. It's okay to import things from China and, but you really need to be adding some kind of like, you need to add some value uh, to that kind of, uh, to that kind of, uh, to the business that you're running. So, uh, so is there any question up to that point? Uh, if you have a question, please ask. I can see uh, there's somebody who had tried to ask a question around, is there a specific field of business? I believe uh, this section answers your question. So let's go on with the report. So selected for funding by region. So as I told you, 5,000 entrepreneurs were funded last year. I'm among those 5,000 that were funded last year. So, and uh, as I also said, out of the 406,000 that applied, 1% 1 
were funded 1%. So it is very competitive. And our purpose as Swahili Port Hub Foundation and other ecosystem players that have come together on this initiative, our goal, like Hapa Kwa Hall, our goal is to enable each one of you get that funding. That is our goal. Each one of you. So, and also for those who have joined in virtually on Zoom, and our goal is to ensure that you all successfully apply and get the 5,000, which is around half a million Kenyan shillings. It's not rocket science, it's very easy, but also very tricky. And our purpose is to guide you on how to do that at zero cost, no charging you, nothing. So, zero cost. And in case there is someone who tells you, hey, ni pay pesa, ni kusaidia ku successfully apply, ama ni kusaidia, trust me, don't do that. The foundation will find out. And I will also, I, myself, I also can't do that. So I can't do that. Like, I can't say that, hey, like you're running a business, let me help you do everything for you. When you get the money, you're going to give me this percentage. I can't do that. I will never do that. You're going to struggle on your own. Our purpose will be guiding you, sir. So these were the businesses that were funded. Majority were from West Africa, followed by East Africa. So I'm going to get to zoom in to where Kenya is. Let's see, where is Kenya, where is Kenya? So as you can see, 207 entrepreneurs that applied last year and in 2020, 207 from Kenya were funded. So I'm one of those 207 entrepreneurs. Right? I'm not doing that because I'm bragging, but what I want to tell you, it is very much possible. Last year, we had the same kind of a meeting. We applied several forms. I was the only one who got the funding. And when I tried to interact with the folks who never got the funding, whatever that we learned are the lessons we want to apply this year so that you all get this funding. So from Kenya, there were 207. Um, from Nigeria, let's see. Nigeria, now Nigeria is in West Africa. How many were funded from Nigeria? Let's see. 1,500. So, I think the reason why most people, that around 1,500 from Nigeria were funded is because the individual who started this program is from Nigeria. He's a billionaire from Nigeria known as Atoni Elumelu. You can go read more about him, right? So he committed his personal money to develop entrepreneurship on the African continent. And this program has been running since 2015. So the reason why majority are from Nigeria because, yeah, majority of Nigerians relate to Like they know him and also they give preference to folks who've applied from Nigeria. So maybe that is a requirement by, the, by their government. But let's forget about Nigeria, that is an outlier. Let's look at Kenya and Uganda. You see that in Kenya, 207 entrepreneurs were funded. In Uganda, 295 entrepreneurs were funded. Kenya is larger than Uganda. The population in Kenya is more than Uganda's. Why is it that more entrepreneurs from Uganda were funded and less entrepreneurs from Kenya were funded? The reason being is that more entrepreneurs from Uganda applied. And as a result of that, more entrepreneurs from Uganda were funded. So when we were starting this info session, Something that I mentioned was that when he applies, he applies, he applies, you all apply. Your friends who are running businesses or your friends with business ideas all apply. It doesn't mean that when he gets funded, you want to be funded. What data indicates here is that the more entrepreneurs that apply from a country, the more entrepreneurs will be funded. That is it. Because your application is not in any way related to his application. Neither is it related to her application. Completely different stuff. This is upon you as an entrepreneur based on what scores you'll be able to uh, make. 
So, so you get that difference. 207 from Kenya, 295 from Uganda. If you go to the first slide, I know for the individuals who are here uh, joining in person, as I said, 406,000 total on over the 54 countries in Africa applied. And if you try to look at top countries by application, Nigeria, 70%, and that explains why 1,500 entrepreneurs from Nigeria were funded because look, 70% from Nigeria applied, right? If you try to compare, Uganda was number three at 3%, right? So this is why more entrepreneurs from Uganda were funded because three pass, almost 4% of entrepreneurs from Uganda, of applicants were from Uganda. Whereas in Kenya, there were 2%. So which means that the entrepreneurs who applied from Uganda were double. If say last year, there were around a thousand entrepreneurs who applied from uh, from Kenya, 2,000 applied from Uganda. And that explains why more entrepreneurs were applied from, were funded from Uganda. And because of that, we want more entrepreneurs from Kenya, and especially, yeah, from Kenya, Sawa, applying. This program this year, we are limiting our focus to entrepreneurs in Mombasa, a cost region that's because that is like the limit of our resources if we had resources we could do this all over kenya but we're only going to focus on mombasa and a cost region and maybe something that i have not mentioned is that if say for example out of the many entrepreneurs that apply from kenya the goal our goal this year is to have 75 percent of those to be coming from Mombasa and across region. So each one of you who has joined us here in person or who is joining us, who's joined us virtually via Zoom, the task is upon you. We want you to be among those hundreds of entrepreneurs from Kenya that will be funded. But it is not an easy work. But it's also very much possible because I did it last year and I did, and I made it. So, so that's it regarding the program. And now finally, out of the 5,000 entrepreneurs that were funded last year, majority were female, 68% were female, 31, almost 32% were male. What does that mean that if you were a female and you applied last year, you had a better chance of being funded than a male, a better chance. And of which I'm not discouraging the male, right? Um, the reality is that the same case is going to apply this year. Why is this interesting? If you look at the entrepreneurs that were funded, these were funded 68% female, 31% male. If you go to those who applied last year, these were funded. If you go to the applications, it tells a completely different story. Kind of like swapped, right? Last year, those who applied majority were male, Majority were male. So Nikama like Wame Geuza. Wame fan 37% male. The other way around. You've got the concept. And it's most likely gonna happen this year. So but then yeah, so which means that if you are a male, competition is even harder. But the same case applies to the females. It doesn't mean okay, now nah, they fund majority female like right the bar is very very high so i think that sums up this report and yeah business stage distribution for those entrepreneurs that were funded idea stage infancy growth so majority of those that were funded were at the idea stage i'm one of those at the idea stage my the business that i'm building with my partners we don't have customers yet. We don't, we, have, we don't even have a cent. We've never even made revenue yet. 
sir. But then why did the foundation fund us? I don't know, we shall get into those specifics later on, sir. But what I'm trying to communicate here is, even if you're it's still a business in your mind, it's a vision in your mind, please apply. I know of friends, right, that right now their businesses are operational, they have a product, they never applied last year. And the reason because that they never probably joined this conversation, I told them, hey guys, apply, they never took it seriously. And also probably because they never believed in the system. So, but once I confirmed that, okay, guys, you know what, I've been funded, well, okay, like, you know what, we're gonna get to apply this year. So don't be like those friends of mine. So you should always believe in yourself. I think for my case, I was funded because we believe so much in our business idea. And we believe so much in ourselves. It's not because we are smart. And top sectors by distribution, out of the 5,000 entrepreneurs that were funded, as you can see, majority were in agriculture, followed by beverages, food and beverages, and the list continues on. And as you can see, of course, agriculture, majority of folks that were funded were in agriculture because majority of people that applied were in agriculture. So that's really kind of like it's so explanatory. So yeah, that is the end of that report. Any question on that before we move on to the next page? Yep. Robert. Okay, so this question is about two businesses and you are using it all. Yeah, so for those who are joining in online, uh, the question he had asked was that if you do have two businesses, should you apply with both businesses? And uh, the response is that apply with only a single business, the one that you believe in the most. That is the one that you should apply with. So, yeah. And don't give someone else to apply for you because still the foundation will find out as part of their due diligence process. So any other question? Any question? All right, no other question, so. Oh yeah, sure. Um, 
Okay, uh, if I got him right, it's regarding the website that you apply, that you used to apply, right? So, yeah, this is, when you apply, you don't send an email. They do have a software, piece of, so it's a website that uh, they have uh, set up to enable you apply. And that, that is actually our next stage. So that is the next stage how to successfully apply. So like I'll walk through the entire application process, but I don't really think time will allow us to go through the entire application process. We left with around 30 minutes so to the end of this, at the end of this info session. But as we communicated, the application deadline is 31st of March. So we have around a whole month. And this is the not only info session we are running, one around several of them right i can see uh, the group ceo of hazina is here and we're working very closely with them sir so we are planning more info sessions like this so during this we're gonna see what we can do and we shall communicate to you on when the next info session will be and where it will be whether it will be here or it will be somewhere else sir but yeah, uh, regarding your question, that is the next uh, agenda, like a walkthrough. How, uh, like how do you know that you've successfully applied? Okay, uh, any other question? Um, So, all right, I got the question. Yeah, you must have a smartphone and a stable internet. So, we shall get into those specifics. And even more than that, at particular stages, sir. So, but yes, you must have a smartphone or at least you need to have a laptop or a desktop pc you can actually even go to a cyber cafe and apply from there now the reason why we have worked with all entrepreneurship ecosystem players in mombasa is so that if maybe you don't have a laptop or your internet is not that strong you can come to swahili port that is if you're around swahili port and get to utilize the resources here. Ukiwa uko say Jongvu, there is another youth hub. You can go over there, work with them. Nyali and all that and all that. So it will be important to know like where each one of you like, like what resources you have. So, because it reaches at a certain stage of this application process, your internet has to be strong enough yeah, we shall get into those specifics later on, sir. But yeah, you must have because you can only apply through their website. That's uh, for those who are joining in online, do you have a question? But yeah, as communicated, you must have a, a smartphone, a laptop, or a desktop PC and in, an internet connection. All right, any other question? Okay, looks like there isn't. So let's go to the next stage of uh, the application process. Uh, let's see. So um, that is a walk through the application process. So this is mostly so since we're running out of time, what we are gonna do is a walk through. Um, is a walk through their their website eh, and how to apply so this is their website it's a uh, tonyelumelufoundation.org 
So that is uh, that is the foundation. In case you want to read more about this program, uh, you can read more about it uh, on their website. So, so yeah, let's see, let's see, let's see. In case that website is hard to know, when I send a to Google, we Tony Elumelu Foundation. Tony Elumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program 2022. Oops, I think I was meant to share my screen for those who are joining us online. Sorry. Oops, sorry for those who are joining us online. Yeah, so yeah, what I was communicating is that you can only apply through their website. So it's very simple. Just go to Google, put Tony Elumelu Foundation. Um, Tony Elumelu. Uh, Elumelu. Gosh. Yeah, Tony Elumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program. I'm a TF. I just so I mean, it's complex. Yeah, once you put in that, um, yeah, like there's only one Tony Elimelu Foundation in the world, so just go to that website. And yeah, that is uh, that is it. And that is it. So yeah, let's go into the specifics of uh, the application phase. So yeah, this is their website. So as you can see, the deadline is 31st of March. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so as you can see, deadline is 31st of March. So, so Leo is when? Today is 24th. We have around one month. So Kishindo okay, will apply successfully. And by the way, um, part of today's program was to get an entrepreneur uh, like to go through this entire process. Yeah, you do a live application. So, but looks like time will not allow. So we shall get to uh, schedule some other time. So this is what happens. After you've gone to their website, just go to apply now. So go to apply now, click over there. And as we wait for it to load, please note that myself, Swahili Port Hub Foundation, or even a, any organization that is coming to make this effort possible, we are not paid by the foundation, by the Tony Lumelu Foundation. So we cannot influence their decisions. So we cannot influence their decisions. We are not paid by them. Neither are they compensating us to do such kind of work like this. So we're only promoting this kind of activity because we believe it's an opportunity. So as we wait for the platform to load, now the benefits of applying early, so, as you can see, it's taking a while to load. It's because as you are accessing it, someone else in Mombasa, Kenya, Africa is also accessing the same. So if you are the kind of person who is going to apply, say, a few hours to the deadline, you are frustrated, most likely application yako haita enda. Because this website in a hang, because many people are trying to access it, as have you seen, it takes a while before it loads. So this is the platform that you're gonna get used to apply. Uh, let's see. So yeah, that is in it to a TF connect.net. So, and you sign in or you sign up. So if you are new, of which I assume majority of you are new, you sign up, you're registering for the first time. For example, if you had applied last year, Naho Kupata, just use the same account you used last year to reapply. So for your case, what a sign in. 
So, so for my case, I did apply last year and I can't like, I can only sign in if maybe I just wanna check out what other folks across the world are up to. So, but I don't know whether you guys will be interested to know like how it looks like Ukundani. So, but this is what happens. So for the interest of you folk, uh, when you are Kohapa, so to sign up, my assumption is that you all have email accounts. Now, wakati mlikuwa mna sign up for this info session, the Google form that you used was requesting for your email. If you don't have an email account, ensure you register for my, the assumption is that you have email accounts. If you need guidance on how to set up a Gmail account, Gmail, please, you can, you can ask. Eh? Uh, question? All right, sure, please go on. Okay, so yeah, last year when I was applying, I used my personal email because it's the one that I access the most. So it's a arafat arafat at gmail.com, right? Um, so use the email that you know you access almost daily. So yeah, use the email that you know and I would yeah, advise just use a Gmail, use your personal Gmail. So yeah, and then there's something else. I haven't seen anyone asking the question, a question such as, like in the company I'm building, we are three of us, me, myself, and another gentleman. We are three of us, right? And now should the all three business partners or founders apply? I'm a VP. So um, I understand you have like a CEO or a managing director or a team lead. In case it's an idea, you don't know who is the managing director or who is the CEO, when you, like who calls the shots. Don't really like it's a bad word to say, but who's the team lead? So, so you are the one who has to apply. Your other colleagues, they literally like, they, they don't have to apply. So, so the team lead or the CEO or the managing director is the lead applicant. So, yeah, that is, uh, that is it. So you then have to, if you are three of you, munaka chini, munaangalia, lead applicant atakuwa nani. And by the way, that is very important. So it's very, very important that you get to figure out on the one who's going to be the lead applicant. So you go to sign up. I can't sign up since I already, I already have an existing account. I don't know if anybody interested to sign up. We are happy to guide you. A volunteer? Oh yeah, sure, come on. Yeah, both of you, but let her come first and then he will as well come, sir. So yeah, introduce yourself, your name, the business you're running, and yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, for those who are joining us online, uh, with us here is Marion. Uh, she runs a salon business. She's from Mikindani. How is the business doing? What's the biggest challenge? Yeah, yeah. More? Or oh, most people are not shaving? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. How much is charge for men? Oh, female customers. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. So they want to grow hair. Oh, interesting. Interesting, yeah. Okay. So that reminds me, like, just I was with uh, some friends of mine, and got Nangalia meme. Then best way to make best way to moja a capost. I'm a chef nyele, nani dem. So 
so like wanajaribu so like kai who them am shave you ele ni nini mbaya so it's like when you may say i don't know maybe that is like it's a personal style i don't know so so marion is going to go through how to successfully sign up there is a difference between signing up and successfully applying signing up to the platform if you are first user it's different from successfully applying those are two different things so so marion just sign up create uh, create an account yeah sure you're going to get to use my computer you're going to do it here live yeah you're doing it live for them to see and also those who are joining in virtually on zoom so so just come this end just come this end so yeah Or oh, you had already signed up? I don't know. I saw my phone. Or oh, with your phone, eh? So ah, let's do it over here. So she said she had tried signing up using her phone. It was stating invalid. Ah, uh, or I can see. Unfortunately, I can. Okay, it's our uh, invalid. Let's see, invalid email address. So it's Marion da 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 da, da at gmail dot com. Oh, you don't have to show me the password. It's okay. Just let me go back. Try to go back. So it's an invalid email. So was this signing in or signing up or signing up, right? Okay. So. All right. So invalid email address. I have no idea why it said so, but let's do it over here. Can you just try signing up using my laptop? So, so, um, She's tried signing up. Don't go, Marion. Just stick around. It's not that it has failed. So, like, she's tried using in signing up using the, her email and password, but in Mekata, now the same password you are not meander, sir. So, uh, it's not that her pass, password is wrong, sir. And I think I have a, I have, I might have an idea why it's failing. So, look at your email. You've even missed out the L, right? Uh, you've missed out the L. I tried to fix that. 
So please pay attention to detail. Very, very important. And that is actually the biggest challenge that we face when some of you are signing up for these events, right? You're being asked to put your emails. Some of you, like, you miss out on your emails. And as a result, like, even if we send you some information, you won't get it because you've put in the wrong email. So please always take your time and put the right details. Pay attention to details. So try saying, huh? Fine, go on, go on. Yeah. No, that was actually even before uh, fixing her email. Try scrolling down. Scroll down. Uh, okay, let me help you scroll. It's okay. Click, sign up. Okay, so, so it's failed. Same password, same email. It's frustrating. Marion, don't go home. We're gonna try another option, sir. So as you can sit down there, you can sign in with Google or sign in with LinkedIn. So if you have a Gmail, that is, I think, the safest option. So, uh, that is the safest option. Uh, she has a question, somebody with a mic. No, no, don't go, don't go. You haven't signed up yet. She has a question, somebody with a mic. Uh, for those that are joining us on Zoom, apologies, there's been a technical hitch over here, but just give us a few. So, Marion, go on. Uh, we have sign up. So, you can see she's signing up using her Gmail. Arafat. But then, why don't we open her smartphone? You can as well. Hi, Arafat. Hello. Hello. Like there is a phone that was sent to you, just another screen, just a 
for this event. Not But for the moment, um, Dr. Matthew Dickens, your hand was up. I uh, shall be coming back to Zoom in a few. Anyone knows this like at this stage like that? You are fine, right? Is anyone who's sorry that I said the same thing? Okay, so coming up. In the meantime, as it comes up, soon, uh, there's someone who had a question on Zoom. Uh, Dr. Martin. Dr. Martin. It was just, it was just, uh, if at all you're doing the login and not necessarily uh, uh, using just wait a bit please uh please pause a bit i don't seem to hear you uh just Hello? wait a bit uh just wait a bit i don't seem to be hearing you please wait a bit Dr. Matthew, please go on with your question. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, it wasn't a question per se, it was just some, some observation. If at all, let's say you're trying right. to create an account the other side, probably the password was not meeting the requirements as had been stated the other side. Having a minimum of eight characters, having a capital letter, some number, some uh, symbol or something like that. That could also be another challenge maybe for some of the users. Other than if at all you're not using maybe your, 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 your Google link, uh, signing in with Google or any other account. So if you're creating an account, ensure the password also meets those because that was the error that was showing at the password point. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Matthew, for that. Yeah. Um, so he's joining in from Zoom. So uh, the reason why Marion don't go. So the reason why, like uh, at the start when she was trying to sign up, it's because the foundation required her to kind of like specify certain information for security purposes, right? The password has to have certain characters. It has to be of a particular length. So, so probably that is something that she had to do for her to be able to progress to the next stage, right? But out of personal experience, so out of personal experience, like what I did last year, each time I always used my Gmail. I only sign up, sign up, sign in using my Gmail, sign up, sign in using my Gmail. So, so that, what that means is that the, in, the password that I use for my Gmail it's the same password that I will always use. So I don't have to create a new password, right? Initially her password, like 
maybe the foundation that was using their platform. It's a bit, but the safest option is use sign up or sign in using Gmail. In case email yako ni Yahoo, I'm sorry, but I'm not kind of like against Yahoo, but like literally there's no Yahoo over there. There's only Gmail, right? So, so you have, you're not done yet. So she's signed up. The next stage is, as you can see over there, choose profile type, an entrepreneur, a mentor. So when it, yeah, this gone. No, choose, like, just choose, as in just click, I think. So just click. Yeah, so, so you have to click, as in you have to select, right? So step two of two. Now she's inside the platform. She's going on with the application, sir. Okay, Marion, go on. Put in all those other details. So I hope you don't mind, right? Thank you. 
So, uh, so if you are trying to connect times with the whole set. You must identify a problem that exists in the society. A lot of you, you may get on your side of the country, but I find it But then you have to do it in a way to solve the issue. So my advice to you, as you are thinking of applying to this problem, is to structure your application in a way that you are solving a genuine problem. Not just put your application, I'm sure I'm not going to be directing people on that. Not just submit your application that you want to do. Make your application come out strongly. There is this problem in our society, 
this is the magnitude of the problem, and this is the solution to address this problem. Very clear. So, uh, as well, thanks to this, there's no reason of a problem that you can make sure you are problem fast. Meaning, you have identified a problem and you want to offer a solution. That's all. So, uh, another advice to you guys target the menu is open to how many countries? 54. 54 countries. 54 countries in Africa. So, it's not just a, a portal for us, it's a portal for people in 54 countries. So, if you are selected, well and good. But if you're not selected, never lose hope. Keep on trying. Do not have a problem as well. Entrepreneurship is not a moment to pass. Entrepreneurship is a time. At this journey, we have to keep going, keep falling, running, standing up, and moving again. So when you apply, when you're selected, well and good. If you're not selected, please keep on trying and keep on So the screen that you see over there, it indicates that you've successfully signed up. You are now inside the platform of uh, the Tony Enumelu uh, Foundation. And that is how it looks like. Anybody else who is at that stage, I'm kind of like very curious. You are at that stage, awesome. And you, her as well, and him as well. Oh, that is super awesome. All right, great. And for the rest, yeah, please ensure that you make it up to that stage. If you're facing any challenge, please uh, get to um, get to reach out. So now, Oksha Fika Hapa, what next? Because this doesn't imply that you have successfully applied. This is just one step of the process. So she's finished one step. She has to go on to the next step, right? I know we want to do him as well, but if you don't mind, let's just get to go through the next stage, right? So the next stage, Marion, uh, come over. So as you are inside the platform, uh, now the next stage is you have to go and now apply. So, and now that applying, you go up there where you see our applications, go to applications at the top, applications, click applications. Then uh, when you get to applications, are you wait for it to load? Yeah, that is it. Because sure there's some stuff that is scattering the screen. I don't know why. All right, sure. So that is it. There are several things. So if you're not sure which is which, it's very easy to get confused. As I told you myself, I applied last year. So me niko hapa. But as you can see, he lifungwa, but in Aisha end of this month. Eh? So, so for her case, she's applying for the 20. 22. So on end up, we vote 2022 flagship program apply. It's all over Africa. So depending on which language you are conversant with. So choose English. La Fofine next. Ensure you've selected English, right? So now those are the terms and conditions. Yeah, it's kind of like important that you go through those uh, terms and uh, terms and conditions. But all those other things that I told you about, 
ikiwa biashara yako ni ile ya kuimport na ku distribute haita apply all that information iko hapo hivyo sa so business idea it's, it's important that you go through all uh, all this information sa uh, at least uweze ku at least uweze kuelewa sa hadi wa make a deadline the program shall open on 1st of january till 31st of march iko hapo Gonna get all that information iko to hapo hivyo application process successful applicants will be categorized in one of the following categories startup disruptor startup innovator ama disruptor which are known as training categories sa unsuccess unsuccessful applicants will be categorized as preparatory and will be directed to the, to take the tf general business training however ukiwekwa kwa hii category ya preparatory you like it is rest assured not up like you will not progress to the next stage of a business plan submission sa so, verification is quite a lot so scroll up to the bottom so you have to go through those terms and conditions if you are okay with them scroll chini at the bottom and at which chini kabisa so ngoja tu kidogo so now na, the top scoring program participants from this stage will be notified via email and that is business plan preparation and submission sir so at the stage of because okisha if you've successfully applied you'll the next stage will be business training which will last around two months and uh so what that saying is that once successful applicants are onboarded which she has done they proceed to the training stage and are granted access to undertake the proprietary business management training program based on respective training categories sir but yeah bado like aki if she stops here it doesn't imply that she will go on to training bado she has not finished applying there's still some stages so scroll chini go to the bottom extreme bottom eh? yeah extreme bottom chini kabisa uh, scroll 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 you can press and hold so that it can move faster no no after pressing hold yeah that way so i can move faster Okay, let me try to do this. Since we're kind of like running out of time. So, so after you've gone through all those terms and conditions, there are two. It's either you reject or you accept. So, if you accept, it means you agree to each and everything that is in there. You could reject, that's it. Naive Meisha. So, you can accept. So, so wait a bit guidelines for the assessment wait a bit so ngoja tu hapo hivyo so uh, preferably you should actually go back um now it's tricky since we're running out of time this next stage takes almost an hour and it is very critical and we don't want you to mess up so so i'm going to share some insights this next stage ukifika hapa hivi always pause don't be in a rush pause read those things very very well so so what they are saying that is the guidelines for the assessment when i was presenting there's something i had pulled up so she's logged on amekuwa hapa amefika stage 2 saizi tuko hapa stage 3 we want to take this assessment it's two different kinds of assessment moja ni psychometric nyingine ni business psychometric is mostly about your personality sir so, are you a tough person or are you a simple person like are you aggressive or you're not aggressive all that and all that and all that uh, robert 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 uh, can you help me pick my charger in kobodro Oops, I hope it doesn't shut itself down. 
So, so then stage three. So that is now that, that next stage where she's going. Just wait, I need to take the chat. Okay, uh, let's go on. So she's at this stage of taking the psychometric and business knowledge assessment. So now, um, Okifika Hapo, always take a course, don't be in a rush to move on to the next stage. So, so what it says that this assessment is divided in four sections and require 45 minutes. It is recommended that you take the assessment in an environment free of distractions and with optimal concentration. So Kiwokopa Mat, it's a terrible idea. Don't take this assessment of Kiwokopa Mat. The best place, Umeka Mahali, Kuna Internet, Iko Strong, Akuna Kelere. So please note that you are to answer all questions and you can only take this assessment once. It's like a one way street. Ukiyanza, and it counts, it's 45 minutes for time. 45 minutes, 30 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes, one minute, done. Depending on what you've scored, that are placed in any of those categories. So that's why it's very important that you take your time. So you'll be required to upload a form of ID that is like your national ID. Uh, please have your chosen form of ID scanned and ready to upload in PDF. So, a photocopy ya ID yako kuwa nayo in a PDF format. Either ome save kwa smartphone ama ome nayo kwa flash disk. So, automatic disqualification criteria. If you are 18 years, if if you are under 18, 17 and below, you are disqualified automatically. Because this is not for, uh, it's only for 18 people and above. If you have received a grant or seed capital from the TF in previous years, like myself, yes, you apply. So, click next button to begin. I do not, we're not gonna do that with us, I see, because we're running out of time. However, so, uh, Hapa, you can always cancel. In case you're not ready, you can always, uh, you can always cancel. 
ama go back unfortunately the kata attack when i'm back uh it's weird eh? but i don't want to go i don't want to do that I don't know now what to do. I'll just go back, sir. I'll just go. I'll just go back. Back again, sir. Why is it important when you make that assessment? Couple of things. One, ensure open a calculator. The foundation does not state this, but I, out of experience, sir. Ensure open a calculator one, open a kalamu, open a notebook. Na omeka mahali kwa table ama kwa mesa ama kwa kitchen. So, because some of the questions they ask, trust me, it's very hard to do these things in your head. Tabidito me andika mahali. Alafu bada ndiweza kujibizo maswali. So, that is one. Two, please go brush up on your knowledge and skills on profits. How do you calculate profit, loss, profit margin, especially those profit loss, profit loss, net loss, or profit, profit margin, net, net loss margin. So, so like what is the formula for profit, right? If you're buying something at 50 bob and you're selling it at 100 shillings, what is your profit? That is one question. If you're buying it at 50 bob, you're selling it at 100. What is your profit margin? So I know profit is very easy, say, but like profit in 50 bob. But what is your profit margin? So, so please go brush up on your skills. Then Okshad brush up your skills on those concepts. You're very sure you know the formula of profit. You know the formula of profit margin. You know the formula of net loss, net loss margin. Then you can come and do this assessment. So, right? Okay. So, like you can see, I cancelled at her step of continuing on. So, but let's say I'm a fan of it, Zote. You can always come back and click up even in progress or Tena. You will do the same. Select English and then continue on. So, so anyway, let's take let's take a risk warning. What is up there with the belly? You want to do that? Anyway, we're running out of time, right? So you can always do that at a. So, but yeah, please just go and ensure that you do that. So, what does it mean that you have successfully applied? I know uh, there is a screenshot we took last year. Uh, yeah, this is an example of somebody who has successfully applied. So, you will get an email that, hey, you have successfully completed the assessment. Based on your response, you are in the disruptor. So this was the last year. So, but this year, the email template is a bit different. Uh, there is a friend who shared with me a screenshot of theirs. Eh? Um, we haven't updated this part, but let me try pulling up that screenshot. In the meantime, in case there is anyone who has a question or you need clarification, Marion, you can. Oh, wait a bit. Before you even leave, let me get to sign you out. I'm going to have to sign you out. So you can just go here and log out. So, yeah. she's, been, uh, she's been logged out. Sir. So once you log in again, Oh, Marion, even before you go, so she's signed up. That was to sign up and even log out. Because many times you may have internet cafe, or you may have a laptop, it's always important you sign out. So let's say next time, Anarudi, what is the process like? Uh, Marion, before, Marian, before you leave. Yeah, you're going to have to sign in, sir. So just come back up. As usual, you can go to the website of the foundation. Uh, take a seat, it's fine. You can go to the website of the foundation, click um, apply now, it will redirect you to the platform for TF.
signing or I log in? So I log in. Yeah, login is the same as signing in, sir. Logging in, signing in is just the same thing. So only that on their platform we have to sign in after the login. So please note that on a stage one day to Japanya, sir. That stage of doing the forty-five minute assessment. Uh, but before you take that assessment, please ensure you find a book. You may come early, you can get it, you can pay, you can call them. What else? Internet is going to be strong. Also, the other thing, I don't know, if you can get a computer, I think that would be best. Laptop or a desktop, that would be best. So, yeah, that will be uh, that will be the best. So she's back over. No, now we don't have to sign up. You have to sign in. So, yeah, then just go have a sign in with Google. Shini, over there. Oh, and then uh, what we shall do, hopefully tomorrow we shall, this thing is being recorded. Eh? So we shall send you a recording of this to your emails. So, yeah. So uh, you can look up your email. Scroll to Shini. Yeah, that is the email over there. Then you literally sign in, sir. But you can sign in because you're gonna be required your password. You need to confirm with your phone, sir. But I think we can cancel that since we had already done things. So then I'll just get to cancel it out. So which means I cannot even access your account. Cheripko access account ya kia tarisa kujua. So so that's it. That is just atuja Malisa. But since we've run out of time, uh, we're gonna end here. Uh, probably we're gonna have to organize another info session. So okay. So I think that's it, Marion. Thanks a lot. And. Uh, yeah, that's it. Question? Let's see. Kuna watu kuwenye wako kwa Zoom. Are those who joining in via Zoom, does anybody have a question? Okay, since there isn't any questions, then we're going to get to end it here but one thing that i would like to communicate right um oh, the, other, the other aspect of actually around there's something we've not gone into so what does it take why did i get the funding and some other people never got the funding i'll just take around two minutes going through that uh let me get to share my screen So what does it take to become a Tony Elmenu entrepreneur? So once you get the $5,000, you're given a title of being a Tony Elmenu entrepreneur. So, so um, but what does that mean that the foundation has entrusted us to be able to execute on the business ideas that we submitted so that we can be able to create jobs and grow the economy? So for myself, Ever since we were, that money was wired to our account, we've not even spent a shilling, and it's almost a week. And we all agreed with my business partners that we are not going to spend even a cent of that money till we have a clear roadmap of what we want to achieve with the 5,000 US dollars. So we need to have a very clear roadmap in terms of milestones. So by the time we spent that money on the business, what do we want to achieve? Or what do we want to have achieved in terms of customers or quite a number of things? So, so um, and that is really something that we are committed. Reason being, the foundation itself as well, every after three months, they get to check in to know, okay, like, this is the business plan you submitted, how far along are you on the journey? Now, this is our warning. If you're planning to apply and then literally later on use that money for other things, 
จนกับไรสาม only apply bearing in mind that ultimately if you get to be funded you will only use this money for the purposes of executing on the business plan that you used to apply for so today i'm employed by swahili port hub right but soon so soon and probably actually yeah soon like if maybe it becomes so intense right it's either we're gonna have to hire somebody to run the business on our behalf or like all the founders we shall be required to quit our full-time jobs and get to join the business so that is a strategic decision that we still have to but please only use this money that is ultimately if you make it only to execute on the business plan that the foundation funded that like specifically for the funds of that business so, so i think that's it so for myself why did i get the funding and other people never got the funding one however much however busy i was i used to get at least one hour two hours it was around three hours every week out of the many hours three hours every week i ensure that i study the materials and i do uh what else study the materials and submit my weekly assignments that that is one of the things i enabled me to progress from the business plan stage sorry from the training to the business plan stage that is one so some of my colleagues that i spoke to when i asked them hey at what stage did you drop out simple manager training why ilikuwa busy so if you are so busy there's a high possibility okay it's okay to be busy but if you don't have time it's most possible I I was feeling to want progress. That is one. When it came to the business plan stage, we did a lot of research. Even though our business is not in operation, we have done a lot of research. So we've done a lot of research to the point that when we were putting our business plan together, we knew what the problem is. We know who our customers are. We know how much money we're going to make. and all that and all that and all that so that is also something those you need uh, you need to put in mind then uh, let's see what else i'm trying to uh, recall the notes um now let's talk in terms of business i told you it is very competitive so so marion your salon is in mikidani so uh, we don't want to know the revenues that you make so Do you know the size of your market? Can you quantify the size of your market? Like what is the total demand of your product? Let me give an example. When we were submitting our business our plan, we knew what is the size of our market. Like of course you know let's take an example of what if maybe we are in the business of manufacturing, we want to compete against Mombasa Maize. So it is very important that you know how many people here in Kenya I'm at to say man to say East Africa let's say Kenya how many people in Kenya eat unga wa ngano you need to know what wangapi packet moja ina cost pesa ngapi and how many packets of maize flour are sold in a year that is going to help you to come up with the size of your market so based on the research that we did with my colleagues we determined that in terms of and by the way the foundation uses dollars they don't use any other currency so you're going to need to familiarize yourself with it uh, with uh, with his currency so but what you can do get figures in kenyan shillings and now convert to dollars for our case we used 100 shillings as the conversion rate so um for our cases uh, the market size was uh, since we are in technology i still uh, i can't really recall the figure because some things have changed but at that time i was the size of our market was around are more than 50 billion kenyan shillings which is more than 50 million usd size of our market so which means that for the product or service we creating if we own 100% market share may not take it as 50 billion kenyan shillings every year which is not possible so if you want to compete na mombasa maize you know there are competitors so probably maybe you looking at market share like 
I want to, I don't want to go into buying. These are the things that you need to know because they will go into your business plan. Aside from stating that our market size is beyond 50 million US dollars, we also stated how many customers they are. So CC, we are looking even beyond Kenya, the kind of business you want to build. So we were like, we're targeting 200 million customers from Sub-Saharan Africa, and the market size is this and this and this. You get it? We have numbers, we have data. So for your case, Salon, how many people in Mikindani, like how many ladies in Mikindani make their hair? Even though size you are located in Mikindani, right? You need to be able to create more jobs. So how are you going to expand beyond Mikindani? Open another salon in same Vita, Amalikoni, or Bambori. Star. Why am I saying so? If you cannot communicate how you want to grow your business over time, like as uh, just business really doesn't have potential to create lots of jobs. So, right? So you put that in your mind. How are you going to expand your salon over time? That is another thing. And then let's see what else. Communication problem. Uh, they had talked about the problem. So I remember at the business plan, what I was like, what is the problem? So before you started the salon, Oriona Shidagan, people walking far to go, I'm a quality of services, coaching, I'm a what to wanna judge this I need. This is a need to destroy the market. So being able to communicate that. So as you can see, like simple, simple things, or like it's really not that complicated, right? But what you really want to do, Swahili port, Zayada Mekwa, Hazina, there are quite a number of one youth network, quite a number of organizations we want to get to help you. So, for example, some of you've made it beyond the training phase. You may think at stage of taking a business plan. Now we want to be able to guide you on how to put together a winning business plan. You can have a very, very interesting business idea. But if your business plan is not convincing, you cannot put your thoughts on paper. There's no way the foundation is up are convinced. So that is it. And then what else? Yeah, but we shall get into those details to make kinds of stages. But for the moment, uh, we're gonna have to focus on how to successfully apply. And as I finish, there's something I promised. I remember last year when I got the email from the foundation that I'm among the Tony Women Entrepreneurs, I promised that I will get to share the business plan and uh, the pitch video that we submitted to the foundation. Till today, we haven't shared that information yet, but I promise we're going to put that out there so that you can all see what we sent, both the business plan and also the pitch video. So uh, we shall communicate. That is something that we're still discussing internally. Now today submit Vileben to make it open. Vileben to submit the video. We shall put it on YouTube. The business plan, yeah, we shall host it somewhere and then share the link so that you can all learn. And for those who will have made it to that stage of business plan, we hope that will be a better guide on how you should be able to structure a business plan. So, all right, there was a, I don't know, it's a question or. What if you're building a social enterprise, inform a training space for transfer knowledge and you have your business case around school? Okay, a social enterprise, it's okay to build a social enterprise, right? Uh, but you need to have a business case. How are you going to make money? You need to have a business case of how you are gonna get to make money. So I think that's it. Yeah, I'm done. Till next time. But in case anyone of you has a question, yeah. Let me ask. Some of you might be interested to know, like, okay, 
the business, what is it about, sir? Uh, let me get to share some materials of what that business is about, sir. Um, though the website went down recently, so... Let me try to share uh, those materials. I'm just gonna share a flyer. So yeah, Robert, you can lead us to the next session. But maybe before Robert does that, I'll just go into, I'll just get to share some brief info of uh, the business that we submitted. Like, just give you guys an idea. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, folks who are on Zoom. So yeah, this is uh, this is just a flyer. Um, we actually even created this before even the foundation where had cash. And as we've got to learn, things are kind of like changing. But yeah, that is literally what the business is about. Um, the business name or the company name is known as a One Coffee. It's currently, the website is put down. Uh, we're sort of like considering rebranding yeah, based off uh, what we have learned. I'll get into those specifics at a later time. Same business, but rather different approach. So, so yeah, that is, uh, that is it. Now, Robert, yeah, please take us through the next phase. Just monitoring, trying to trying to monitor uh, what's the best way to, to use. So give us suggestions. Right? So we go with your suggestions. There's a, a talk about changing gender in mind. Then what next? So what do you suggest? Uh, we commit like three or four days. Come to study reports. Make sure within those four days, kill them to upper make sure. They're so that was one of the suggestions. Um, we, can, we can go, we can see how we can come to your place. Because I understand the number of the time of the Saudi. Because we want this thing to happen. Just to make it very well with the first thing that we go with the Danish students. So what do you suggest? Yeah, we are all like that. Okay, so his question is, how long does it take to apply? So uh, there are different stages. Uh, Marion has successfully onboarded, but she has not yet successfully applied. So which means badok naka, badok nakazi. Sasa iyo stage yenye imebaki, that stage that is remaining takes one hour. 
it takes one hour. That remain pale penye tumefikia to the point where she will get that email that at your email, you have successfully applied, but one hour, it takes one hour. Sir. Yes. Training takes two months. Yeah. But the entire program takes one year. So which means deadlines, applications, ikifungwa 31st of March, for those who will have succeeded and made it up to the end, you will get your money when? If it's not December, January, but there's a high possibility it will be in January next year. So you have to be patient. If money is what you are after, so please, so yeah, but it, it's kind of like worth it. It's other way it is worth it. So. Yes. Let me let me explain something. This be very. It's very important that you get this. Uh, these are the stages. In a stage one, my body. Stage two, you fill your business data and personal data. Stage three, you take the test. The one I've told you that takes around forty-five minutes to one hour. So. Till now, the thing that matters the most is how you can move from stage one to stage two to stage three. So, oops, there are people on Zoom. Let me go to share my screen. So, say so there's a lot to do. What you should focus on. So, let me give let me give this a uh, passing shot, sir. Eh? So easy, don't invest time thinking about what is your market size, customers, it doesn't matter. We were training, you don't know you don't need to know what is the size of your market, customers work on inani and all that. That is not necessary, Sai. Change it necessary, Sai, are those things can be a go know the formula ya profit nigani. What is profit? Profit margin. Loss, net loss margin. That's all that you need to know. So that is all that you need to know. And some other questions, it will be a matter of playing around with your mind. I can remember one of the questions at that stage was that. Assuming the foundation has given you the $5,000. And uh, once the money gets onto your account, your relative tells you, hey, you know what, Maze, like, kuna ibi ashara na ita later pesa. Later, like, so now let me use my example, right? The foundation funded us to invest the money in building one coffee. So, so, beshtiangu wakuja na meheo na juwa aje saizini time ya elections. Let's invest your pesa to tengeneze maybe my posters, and if it is others are my politicians, but a pata pesa mob, alafu, like you will replicate. When I get, I don't know, what, what would you guys answer? When I get, like, there, where we are, when coffee doesn't have customers, we don't have revenue. A friend approaches me and yambie, hey, let's invest your business to tengeneze vitu around elections, my posters, my t-shirts, then to key invest maybe half of that money to tapata more, what would you guys do? That is the question by the way that come across in the platform. What would you guys do? I'm kind of like interested in what would you do? Anybody like a volunteer, what would you do? Because these are the typical questions you're going to come across, yeah? Absolutely, yeah. Don't lose focus. So, stick to the script. Right? Sasa, so, if you are the kind of a person that doesn't have time, just wait your car. You need to go for it. So, 
So yeah, it's very important. Yes, so I think that's it. So All right, this sounds great. Which is the most appropriate date and time? What time date and time works best for you? Let's see if we can jack in there is a one youth network up in a social hall. There is a few jack you go in Yani to close the gap in Koratina Square. We can come over there in Likoni to Nalikon. The very number, right? We are not short, so it's a whole you to decide where, when, this is it by the panda. International is better, right? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna get to do that. Now we're gonna have to set the next plan. Uh what one that be like? Okay, maybe we can put it in terms of sub count level. One up one at Okam Vita. Vita. Uh one up to Saudi. 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 Maybe what we can do, we can know what when you talk about Saudi, like you take responsibility, kind of like you copy like from Saudi, from Vita, now what we can have done Saudi, so we know of other places like in Nyali, we can go to close the gap, in Kisauni, uh, you know of a place where you can get Saudi, or all of them can go to close the gap, right? Um, for Mikindani, you can go to one in Nikwa, they do have a space, so. Uh, for Nikoni, we can go to Likote, Namanyata. So if we can get that information, maybe Robert, you can facilitate that. Wangapi to come to Dani. And I done it, John. You know, I do have one information. Which date, which time works best? Let's say we can tell you which date, which time works best. Yeah? Yeah, so next week, so next week. Next week, Wednesday. Next week, Wednesday. So it's very important so that we can be able to plan our schedule. So. Or oh, these three stages, let's say how many hours, depending, now this one will depend, so it will depend, but on average, it should take you not more than three hours. Yeah, one day event, yeah, one day event. Yeah, uh -huh. go on. Uh, it's still fine. I think we still have some headway. So, if say, for example, because many times eh, organizing these events in a hybrid format in a bit complicated. So, so uh, most likely, if we say we're going to be Kidani, I should have one of people joining in from Zoom. So, much in India, say, Yani, nobody will be joining in by a subscription. People have to be there. Right? So, so that is how it's going to be. Maybe we can try to make arrangements to have some laptops or computers to kind of like guide people through this. So, so yeah, but maybe to coordinate what we're gonna do, we're gonna set up a WhatsApp group. So one, and we shall probably be able to like yeah. But if you're interested to coordinate, say maybe in Saudi, you can let us know. Coordinating in Kodi, you can let us know. Coordinating in Yani, you can let us know. Done, you can let us know so that we can be able to plan those days out. Yeah. yeah. Um, any other question? But yeah, thanks a lot for the suggestion. Any other questions? Yeah.
just confirm is the number to the data is the global subject here yeah. so that you can share that information. Observing that subject, but you just put a test. So the homework is this based on the advice of the piano. The homework is this, right? If you have an already existing business, like Kim has an already existing business, her, she has an already existing company, company as well, right? The homework is this figure out who is going to be the lead applicant, like while we are waiting, figuring out Nanya to the lead applicant, right? Um, Minana, I'm going to be accompanying her to two. So who's going to be the lead applicant? It's you, right? So maybe what you can do between now and next week, who is going to be the lead applicant? That is if you already have an existing business. If you don't have an existing business, it's just an idea, that also applies. Maybe you can business idea since your child is in school. So put your thoughts together. What is the name of the what name of the business? Things are gonna to to change, but it's fine by me to have a name. So what is the problem? Which industry will it be? So, and then if you turn up on the next week, you have this details from Oja. If you don't have an email, set up a Gmail. If you don't set up Gmail. So, please try to figure out all So, when we get to meet next week, at least you've already done all this. So, so. Cool. I think we are done. And yeah, please. Try to brush up on your skills on credit, on profit, loss, margin. Profit, loss, and margin. So, yeah. so anything else? Going one, two, three, four, five. Boom! Done. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Gosh. Actually, there was. Yeah. I literally have. I literally have an idea. Like, because I was literally just another program. I saw a last week breakfast. So, apologies for that. However, I'm following up on it. I was to be actually to break the end of this session. But if you are a partner, if you are a partner, if you reach a stage, foundation is like you want to build a company, if you are a company, that's fine. Like that. If you are a partnership, you will be required to come up with what is known as a partnership concept later. Like Usema, like myself in Harapat Moon. Okay, thank you very much for coming. And uh, I hope this has been. And for sure, to keep your next year, it will really be such that out of all those that you just have to this simple session, you are not among the 20 million entrepreneurs. Because it's not rocket science. Can make it. I made it. You guys can make it. And I'm ready. We're also gonna bring other entrepreneurs from Mombasa and across the region who made it. That will be guiding us throughout this entire process. So it's not rocket science. It's very much achievable. Just believe in yourself. And sure. Let's put on next week. Thank you guys.